Number 10, Jennifer Aniston nearly quit. Jennifer was the last to sign for the final 10th season of Friends, and she very nearly didn't return at all. Part of this was down to her busy career because at this point, she was definitely one of the most famous of the Friends cast. She had several movies on the slate. She later revealed that she was debating not coming back because she had a couple of issues that she was dealing with at the time. Jennifer said that she wanted to end the show when people still loved them and they were on a high. She also questioned herself about how long she really wanted to play Rachel. Jennifer obviously eventually agreed to the final season, but she is the reason why it's the shortest season, because she only agreed to return if it was cut short. Luckily for everyone, she decided to stay and felt bittersweet about the final season, and in the end she found herself wishing that it could have continued on. Most of the cast members' careers have crashed and burned after Friends ended, but Jennifer Aniston was a rare exception. She went on to star in several Hollywood blockbusters like Bruce Almighty, Breakup, Marley and Me, Just Go With It, Horrible Bosses, and Where the Millers, all of which were very successful at the box office. Number 9, Matthew struggled with substances. As we know, Matthew Perry's sudden death has completely shocked the world. The beloved actor was found at his home after an apparent drowning. He was only 54 years old, and his passing was an absolute tragedy. Many of the Friends cast struggled to deal with their newfound fame, and for Matthew, this led to problems with addiction, which he has been extremely open about in his memoir. Although he said that he was never drunk on set, he did admit to being painfully hungover to the point that everyone became aware of. After more than one stint in rehab, he managed to get clean, and then he became very passionate about helping other people who were struggling. Just last year, he revealed that he and Jennifer Aniston had stayed in each other's lives, and they remained in close contact. He said that it was actually Jennifer who confronted him first about his addictions during the filming of the show. Apparently, she approached him during a break and told him, we know you're drinking. And looking back on that moment, Matthew thought that it was very scary, because in his own mind, he thought he was doing a perfectly fine job of hiding his habits from his co-stars. At a certain point, they all knew that he was in trouble, and they did their best to support him. Number 8, Lisa Kudrow sued the show. Lisa Kudrow's manager Scott Howard sued her in 2008, year after she ended her contract with him, and four years after Friends ended. Howard claimed that Lisa owed him residuals for the reruns of Friends and other projects that she had worked on while under his management, to the tune of 10% of everything that she got. He stopped paying him when the contract was dissolved and argued that the 10% was only payable when he was managing her. Eventually, he won the case in 2014, and the judge awarded him $1. $1.6 million. Of course, for someone who earned $1 million per episode for the final seasons of Friends, that figure wouldn't have put too much of a dent in her bank account. In a statement, Elisa's attorney said, the jury's verdict is merely one step in the legal process. This case will ultimately be resolved at the appellate level. Mrs. Kudrow has faith in the judicial system, and she believes that the eventual outcome of this contractual dispute will be in her favor. In a statement of his own, Scott Howard's attorney said, what generally happens now with unsophisticated actors actress clients is they overpay for filing a frivolous appeal that has no chance for success. So this legal battle got extremely messy in the end and it must have been embarrassing to be a part of. Number 7, David Schwimmer went into hiding. As we know, David struggled with the fame that came from being such a huge hit at such a young age. Of the main six actors and friends, he's the one who has shied away from the limelight the most. Although he continued to work after the show ended, he spent many years preferring to do voice work, directing, producing, and has been canned about struggling to find a way to continue acting as he's such a huge celebrity. He said, it was pretty jarring and I messed with my relationships with other people in a way that took years. I need to kind of adjust to and become comfortable. It made me want to hide under a baseball cap and not be seen. So I was trying to figure out how do I be an actor in this new world, in this new situation. Friends was such a huge hit from the moment it premiered that it didn't just bring fame to its stars, it brought a mega level of fame that is hard to understand. For David, it was just too hard to deal with. So much so that it didn't just affect him, but his relationships and other people as well. He was also an actor who, as a part of his craft, liked to be anonymous and observe people out in the world. But of course, he simply could not do that anymore once he reached that certain level of success. Number 6, Matt LeBlanc was arrested. Before he became famous, Matt was already getting used to that crazy party lifestyle that most people associate with being a celebrity. After Friends was finished, he admitted that he was arrested for drunk driving twice. He said,
said, when I was young and stupid, I wasn't driving fast, just crooked. This came up when he was cast as one of the hosts of the new Top Gear, and fans were not sure whether a history of reckless driving was a good thing when it came to presenting a show about cars. Matt dismissed the incidents as the product of his age, although he has said that he's grateful the press never got a hold of his mugshots. While his drunk driving record happened before fame and fortune came to him, he also got into some pretty dark times when it came to dealing with his newfound fame. He nearly had a nervous breakdown due to the intensity of working on Friends, especially when the show came to an end. Speaking about that time, Matt said that for years and years, he barely left the house because he was so burnt out. He wanted not to have a schedule and not to have to be anywhere. Luckily, he was in a position financially to be able to do that with all of his savings, but of course his agent was not too happy. Matt said that was a very dark time for him and it even led to a nervous breakdown. Number five, Jennifer Aniston's wedding. While not every cast is close off screen, the cast of Friends was known for being friends in real life, as well as having a huddle before each episode started filming and negotiating their salaries as a team. The cast were often photographed out and about together and they talked in interviews about how close they remained, even after the filming ended. I mean, Jennifer Aniston is even godmother to Courtney Cox's daughter. But in 2015, when she married Justin Theroux, she didn't invite any of her male co-stars to the ceremony. It was a small wedding with only 70 guests, but it did include Courtney and Lisa. Matthew Perry said that he was surprised he wasn't invited, but he was still very happy for the couple, despite the awkwardness of rejection. Hopefully though, he didn't take too much offense, considering that Jennifer didn't even invite her own mother to her wedding with Brad Pitt in 2000. In an interview with Ellen in 2018, she opened up about why she went years without talking to her mother, Nancy Dow, saying, quote, she was critical, she was very critical of me. Because she was a model, she was beautiful, magnificent, I wasn't, I never was. She added that her mother was very unforgiving and would often hold long grudges. They ended up reuniting several years later, and by Jen's marriage to her second husband, Justin, in 2015, they were finally on speaking terms. But the funny thing is, Nancy still wasn't invited to that wedding either. Number four, David's neighbors hated him. Even stars have feuds with their neighbors and David Schwimmer is no exception. In 2010, the star bought a property in the East Village, townhouse from 1852, and of course the land that it stood on. But he decided that rather than renovate it to keep up the facade, he would just tear the whole thing down and start fresh. It's something that a lot of property developers are known for doing, but it's never really a popular decision. As a result, an anonymous neighbor left a message for him that was too big to ignore. For some reason, they decided it would really upset him if they spray painted in huge letters on the construction site fence. They wrote the words, Ross is not cool, which is both hilarious and kind of genius because it actually echoed a storyline from the show, where Ross moves into a new building and becomes enemies with the neighbors by not chipping in for the maintenance man's retirement gift, which kind of goes to show you that life really does imitate art. There's no saying how David reacted to this, but you can imagine that he wouldn't be too pleased that the construction site had graffiti. Matthew's extreme anxiety. Matthew Perry admitted two years ago that he suffered from anxiety, which often came when he was trying to be as funny as he could in front of the live studio audience while they were filming Friends. The admission came up during the HBO Max Friends reunion with Jennifer Aniston, Courtney Cox, Lisa Kudrow, Matt LeBlanc, and David Schwimmer. Matthew said that trying to be great made him extremely nervous, and his co-stars at the reunion said they never had any idea that he was suffering on set because he always delivered such a fabulous performance while being seemingly at ease. He said to me, I felt like I was going to die if they didn't laugh. And it's not healthy for sure, but I would sometimes say a line and they wouldn't laugh and I would sweat and just go into convulsions if I didn't get the laugh I was supposed to get. I would freak out. His co-star Lisa was shocked to hear that. She said that Matthew was always such a cool cucumber and he was one of the best on set, always delivering a line well as he played Chandler. Even though he never said anything to his co-stars back then, he felt this way every single night. And as we know now, his time on Friends was significantly impacted by his addiction. Memoir controversy. One surprise takeaway from Matthew Perry's autobiography was his apparent feelings towards Keanu Reeves, after he repeatedly questioned why other actors die while Keanu is still alive. Quote, why is it that original thinkers like River Phoenix and Heath Ledger die, but Keanu Reeves still walks among us? Upon learning that another former co-star Chris Farley had died, he wrote, I punched a hole through Jennifer Aniston's dressing room wall when I found out. And in the next line, he wrote, Keanu Reeves still walks among us. 
Matthew would later apologize for the comments and then release a statement saying, I'm actually a big fan of Keanu. I just chose a random name, my mistake. I apologize. But that wasn't it at all. There was also a lot of other interesting admissions in his memoir. Another thing he also revealed is that he asked out Jennifer Aniston before filming Friends. He said that the two of them were the only friend stars who knew each other before the show, having met three years before through mutual acquaintances. In one part of the book he wrote, I was immediately taken by her, how could I not be, and liked her. I got the sense that she was intrigued too and maybe it was going to be something. Safe to say that fans were more than shocked by that revelation. And number one, everyone was scared of Matt LeBlanc. Now Joey is far from a scary guy, but when Matt LeBlanc was first cast in the role, some of the other cast members were a little bit afraid of him. This fear was based off of what they knew about Matt himself. The fact that he was raised by a mechanic and had done a stint as a male model as well, and had done a stint and had done a stint as a male model, as well as what they knew about the character of Joey, who was known as a very forward womanizer. Jennifer Aniston in particular remembers being intimidated before she met him herself. She said, I was scared of that type of guy. He thinks it's very funny now, and actually he can sit down and comfort me just like Courtney or Lisa could. So it's a good thing that Matt turned out to be just as much of a sweetheart as Joey was, despite a slightly rocky start. First off, Tish Cyrus, Miley's mother, allegedly stole Noah Cyrus's man. Earlier last week, a source told Peep that the younger Cyrus sister was offended over her mom's relationship with the Prison Break star Dominic Purcell. The insider claimed that Noah and Purcell had previously hooked up and stopped seeing each other before the actor and Tish had pursued their own relationship. Noah and Dominic were seeing each other in a friends with benefits way off and on. And then Tish started something up, the source said, adding that, quote, Tish knew that he had been seeing Noah prior. Tish never gave Noah the chance to talk about all of this before they got married, the insider also noted. Tish and Dominic exchanged their I do's in Maid of Honor Miley Cyrus's backyard on August 19th, 2023. Noah was not present at the ceremony. What's even worse is that Tish allegedly hired security to keep daughter Noah out of the wedding. A source told Fox News Digital that to ensure Noah did not attend the ceremony, Tish hired lots of security. Noah's house in Malibu is located just blocks away from Miley's residence. The source added that at the time of the wedding, Miley was unaware of the relationship that Noah had with Dominic. Fox News Digital was also previously told that Noah and Dominic were seeing each other on and off but later cut ties. When Tish began dating him in 2022, she was privy of Noah's history with him, although there was no overlap. Noah and brother Brazen Cyrus allegedly spent their mother's wedding day together at Walmart, where Noah donned a Billy Ray Cyrus shirt and posted a cryptic message about loving her father to Instagram. Next up, let's discuss my and Billy Ray's troubled relationship. Billy Ray Cyrus, the 62-year-old country music icon, has reportedly attempted to mend his strained relationship with his daughter. The father-daughter duo has experienced a growing distance in recent years following Billy Ray's divorce from Miley's mom, Tish, and his subsequent marriage to 34-year-old singer Fire Rose. However, insiders suggest that Billy Ray has made efforts to reach out to Miley, including congratulating her on her recent Grammy win for her hit single, Flowers. Sources close to the family revealed to Us Weekly that Billy Ray has made several attempts to contact Miley, expressing his pride and congratulations. Despite the rift between them, friends of the family are hopeful that the estrangement will not be permanent. However, the insider also noted that Miley has chosen to align herself with her mom amid the family turmoil, leaving her relationship with her dad strained. All right, now let's discuss some of Miley's past controversies. Miley was criticized for a dance number she did at the height of her Hannah Montana fame, which featured a poll at the 2019 Choice Awards. While singing her hit Party in the USA, Miley got off on top of an ice cream cart and straddled the pole as she belted out the lyrics. Miley claimed that she had no intentions of causing controversy. It wasn't a poll. It was actually just for stability, guys. I had a 
heel on. What do you want from me? The singer said in a clip from her Used to Be Young docuseries on TikTok. Was I really gonna do my performance without dancing on top of an ice cream cart? Cyrus said. Cyrus later admitted to British Vogue in June that she carried a lot of guilt and shame around that time period because of how her younger audience reacted to her edgier persona. I carried some guilt and shame around myself for years because of how much controversy and upset I really caused. Now that I'm an adult, I realized how harshly I was judged. I was harshly judged as a child by adults. And now, as an adult, I realized that I would never harshly judge a child. After Miley's viral Wrecking Ball video, the world seemed to be in full meltdown. The song, which released in 2013, was under the radar for its explicit content. Cyrus shocked everybody by straddling a bulldozer ball in the video for Wrecking Ball. She received a lot of criticism from viewers and was labeled as a bad role model to her army of fans. Miley Cyrus was recently interviewed by ABC where she spoke about her wrecking ball controversy and the open letter from the late Sinead O'Connor talking to her. First, talking about the controversy, Miley said, I was expecting there to be controversy and backlash, but I don't think I expected other women like Sinead O'Connor to put me down or turn on me, especially women that had been in my position before. Now, let's discuss Miley Miley's heated divorce. Miley and Liam Hemsworth had an on and off relationship that began after they worked together on the 2010 film The Last Song. The pair got engaged in June 2012 but called it off the following year. But in 2016, Hemsworth and Miley rekindled their romance and tied the knot two years later. However, the two sums split for good after eight months of marriage. Following their split, Miley was accused of cheating on Hemsworth after she was spotted getting cozy with Caitlin Carter. The musician, for her part, shut down the allegations and cleared the air. Once Liam and I reconciled, I meant it and I was committed, she wrote through a lengthy Twitter thread in 2019. There are no secrets to uncover here. I've learned from every experience in my life. I'm not perfect. I don't want to be. It's boring. I've grown up in front of you, but the bottom line is I have grown up. I can admit to a lot of things, but I refuse to admit that my marriage marriage ended because of cheating. Liam and I have been together for a decade. I've said it before and it remains true. I love Liam and always will. Miley's song Flowers had apparently a lot of hidden meaning. When Miley Cyrus announced the release date of her song from her eighth album, Endless Summer Vacation, there was a lot of excitement over it. But following its release, the melodic beat, catchy lyrics, and eye-catching music video certainly got fans talking. Not only was it her first song, in two years, but Miley released it on her ex-husband Liam Hemsworth's birthday. On top of that, fans are pretty convinced the song is a response to Bruno Mars' When I Was Your Man, with theories even suggesting that the music video harbors references to her and Liam's former relationship. Many believe that the gold dress, which Miley sports at the beginning of the music video, is a hidden message about Liam's relationship with his Hunger Games co-star Jennifer Lawrence. Lawrence. Eagle-eyed fans think the dress resembles the gold gown that Jennifer wore as she attended the Hunger Games premiere alongside Liam in March 2012. The house in which the video was filmed for Flowers has also been a talking point when it comes to theories about Liam and Miley. The house is thought to be Miley's five-bedroom Studio City home, which she reportedly purchased in 2011 for $4 million. It has been rumored that Liam previously cheated on Miley inside that exact house. Towards the end of the video, Miley can be seen strutting her stuff and dancing around her gorgeous home wearing an oversized black suit. This brings about another fan theory that the suit is in fact Liam's. As fans of the pair may remember, Liam sported a similar suit as he attended the Avengers Endgame premiere. Not only that, but there were rumors at the time that Liam could be seen telling Miley to behave for once as they posed on that exact red carpet. 
Miley Cyrus was apparently once a mean girl in her past. This once mean girl mocked Demi Lovato and Selena Gomez in an online video with her best friend Mandy back in 2008. On their YouTube channel, the teenage girls decided to mimic Miley's Disney rivals when they word for word copied one of Selena and Demi's recent YouTube videos. Although they denied doing this with cruel intentions, they later took the video down and apologized. Miley and Katy Perry locked lips during her tour in 2014, but this wasn't the first time the pair had shared a kiss. The girls have been friends since teenagers, and it's been speculated that Katy Perry's hit single, I Kissed a Girl, was actually inspired by her close relationship with Miley. Lastly, after much gossip and scandal about Miley's relationships, the superstar decided to set the record straight with a lengthy post on social media. The singer went all in during this outrage, which I must admit had some truth in it. Miley ranted about how the media treats her relationships, claiming that famous men aren't treated the same when they date multiple women. Her post said, quote, men, especially successful ones, are rarely shamed. They move on from one beautiful young woman to the next most times without any consequence, she wrote. They are usually referenced as legends or heartthrobs or a ladies man, etc., where women are called awful names. I am just trying to thrive and survive in a man's world. If we can't beat him, join him. Can't I just have a kiss in an acai bowl, she continued, referencing to the news that spiked the rant, a TMZ video of Miley kissing 22-year-old Cody Simpson while on an acai bowl date in Los Angeles. First off, we have those racial tweets Haley posted 10 plus years ago that came to the surface recently. In 2019, Haley Bieber found herself at the center of a scandal when some of her old tweets resurfaced. Bieber was called out for posting some seemingly racist racist statements which she has since deleted. In one post from January 2012, Bieber allegedly wrote, shut up before I smack you back to your own country. In another tweet posted in November 2013, Bieber reportedly wrote, to those foreigners who don't celebrate Thanksgiving, so sorry your country didn't have pilgrims to start such a sick holiday. Understandably, Bieber faced a slew of backlash for posting such problematic messages, with one user on X creating a thread to highlight some of the model's most egregious post. The thread even highlighted Bieber's alleged use of multiple racial slurs, suggesting that her online activities had been highly, highly offensive in the past. Next, let's discuss Haley allegedly bullying a classmate in school. Having grown up as the daughter of movie star Stephen Baldwin, Haley Bieber has likely experienced immense privilege throughout her life. As a celebrity herself, Bieber's character has been called into question on several occasions with one critic suggesting the model was not very nice in middle school. According to a since deleted video, TikTok user Kimona Elizabeth posted, think you can hurt me? Hailey Bieber was my middle school bully, she says. Elizabeth started a follow-up video in which she elaborated on her claim. I was in fifth grade, Elizabeth explained. Hailey was in sixth. She bullied me. Middle school is full of kids who are either the bullies or the bullied. Unfortunately, I was the bullied, and for that year, Haley was my bully. However, Elizabeth didn't seem to hold a particular grudge against Justin Bieber's wife. Still, it's curious to find out that she may have had some shady interactions with some of her classmates when she was younger. Haley's uncle, Alec Baldwin, got in some serious trouble in 2021 on a movie set. On October 21st, 2021, at the Bonanza Creek Ranch in Bonanza City, New Mexico, cinema cinematographer Helena Hutchins was fatally wounded, and director Joel Souza was also injured on the set of the film Rust. And a live round was discharged from a revolver used as a prop by actor Alec Baldwin. The sad and accidental death prompted a discourse on occupational safety in the film industry, the treatment of its employees, and also the use of real guns as props. In 2011, Alec was kicked off an American Airlines flight after he refused to turn off his cell 
phone when crew members asked him to. The actor shared via X that he had been playing words with friends when the incident occurred. Flight attendant on American reamed me out for playing words with friends while we sat at the gate not moving. Hashtag no wonder American Air is bankrupt, he wrote on X. But oddly, 30 Rock plays in flight on American. Hashtag there's always united. Wow. A statement posted to the American Airlines Facebook page read, the passenger was extremely rude to the crew, calling them inappropriate names and using offensive language. After his removal from the plane, Alec continued his journey on a later American Airlines flight. Now on the 3 o'clock American flight, he says on, on X, the flight attendants already look smarter. Wow. In November 2013, TMZ caught Alec, Haley's uncle, on video using a homophobic slur during an argument with a photographer. I apologize and I will retire the slur from my vocabulary, he wrote via X. His MSNBC interview show, Up Late, was cancelled less than two weeks later. Only five episodes of the show had aired up to that point. Now, back to Haley. Fans think Haley was obsessed with Selena Gomez and Justin's past relationship after some old tweets were resurfaced. I don't care what anybody says, but Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez together is the definition of a teenage dream. Hashtag word, one of her tweets read. Another read, she is beyond flawless. And he's, you know, he's Bieber. They are the perfect relationship. And I'm forever alone. Fans think it's borderline creepy that Haley made these tweets and then years later married Justin. In 2023, TikTok blew up after the Kylie Jenner, Selena Gomez, and Haley Bieber scandal. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let me explain. Selena was photographed in a bikini, which indicated she had gained weight, but of course still looked gorgeous. But the press was ripping into her, fat shaming and body shaming her for her recent weight gain. Soon after, Haley posted a TikTok where she lip synced to, I'm not saying she deserved it, but God's timing is always right. She deleted it shortly after. There was no direct connection between these two events, but Selena's fans accused Haley of posting it to body shame Selena. Selena recently commented on a video speculating about this whole theory saying, I don't let these things get me down. Be nice to everyone. She also commented on several other TikToks shaming Haley. Selena later posted a story on Instagram showing how she accidentally over laminated her eyebrows. Kylie Jenner, less than a day later, posted a story of her eyebrows and then Haley's soon after. Selena fans assumed Kylie was mocking her. Haley has never said anything directly to Selena, but this is the closest it's gotten, so it turns the fire up. Selena's fans' current form of activism is to follow Selena on Instagram and unfollow Haley and Kylie. Because of this, Selena has overtaken Kylie as the most followed woman on Instagram. Haley has also been accused of being rude at restaurants. In July 2020, a TikTok video was posted by Julia Caroland in which she rated celebrities she served while working at a restaurant in Manhattan. The video has been watched over 3 million times and called out several famous people, including Kylie Jenner, Gigi Hadid, and Hailey Bieber. Next up, we have Miss Bieber, she says in the video. This is going to be controversial. I've met her a handful of times, and every time she was never nice, she continued. I really want to like her, but I have to give her like a 3.5 stars out of 10. Sorry. It seems that Carol Ann's impression of Justin Bieber's wife was far from flattering. Eventually, the bad review got all the way back to the model herself, who reportedly commented on the TikTok, saying, just came across this video and wanted to say sorry if I've ever given you bad vibes or a bad attitude. She continued, that's not ever my intention. Hopefully, she's since changed her ways. Now let's talk about Haley shading Taylor Swift. In 2023, a video of Haley Bieber hosting an episode of Host the Mic in 2018 started circulating online on TikTok. In the clip, Haley made a gagging face when Taylor Swift's album Reputation was mentioned. Understandably, Swift fans were not pleased by Bieber's apparent diss of the pop star. And Selena Gomez enthusiasts apparently took the gesture as an affront 
to them too. Somewhat surprisingly, Selena decided to respond to the viral clip of Bieber saying, so sorry my best friend is and continues to be one of the best in the game. Selena commented on the video proving she definitely has Taylor's back. But that's not all. The Biebers again hit the headlines in 2023 when another old video recirculated. In this particular clip, Justin impersonates an unforgettable moment involving Taylor in which the cruel summer singer got upset about bananas while on medication following eye surgery. Haley could be heard laughing in the background of the video, leading fans to believe that the Biebers were ruthlessly mocking Taylor once again. Lastly, let's discuss Haley allegedly copying Selena Gomez. As well as being embattled in a number of online feuds with Selena, Hailey Bieber has also been accused of copying the only murders in the building star. For instance, Gomez launched her cooking show, Selena and Chef, on Max in 2020, giving viewers a glimpse inside her own kitchen. In December 2022, Hailey launched her own cooking show on YouTube called What's in My Kitchen, which took fans inside her house. As a result, comparison between the two series were quickly made. Tattoos provide further evidence that Haley has copied Selena. Both Bieber and Gomez have G tattoos behind their ears, which is certainly a strange coincidence. In 2015, Refinery29 revealed that Gomez's tattoo was a tribute to her little sister, Gracie. Meanwhile, Haley was reportedly one of many celebrities to get a G tattoo behind her ear in tribute to her pastor, Chad Veach's daughter, Georgia, who lives with a rare brain condition. Whether or not Haley actually actually decided to copy Gomez is unclear, though it doesn't seem as if fans will stop believing that Justin Bieber's wife is taking notes from his ex, Selena. Jim Carrey, one of the biggest and highest paid actors of our time, has shared his thoughts on Hollywood since retiring from the spotlight. After the Chris Rock Will Smith Oscars slap incident, Carrey shared his opinions on the standing ovation Will Smith received when winning an Oscar later that night. Hollywood is just spineless, and it really felt like it was a clear indication that we aren't the cool club anymore. Carey went on to say that Smith should have been escorted from the Dolby Theater after slapping Rock for making an insensitive joke about his wife, Jada Pinkett Smith. In March 2022, Carey announced to Access Hollywood that he was probably retiring from acting. Well, I'm retiring. Yeah, probably. I'm being fairly serious, he shared. It depends. If the angels bring some sort of script that's written written in gold ink that says to me that it's going to be really important for people to see. I might continue down the road, but I'm taking a break. Carrie added, I feel like, and this is something you might never hear another celebrity say as long as time exists, I have enough. I've done enough. I am enough. Our second celebrity is Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato starred in many Disney Channel movies and shows like Camp Rock, Princess Protection Program, and Sunny with a Chance. But on a podcast, Lovato shares she, as well as many of her co-stars, were subjected to harsh treatment and multiple strict rules and regulations while working for the company. She said, you can't be seen at a party with a red cup in your hand because it looks like you're drinking. There was this website called Ocean Up that would take all scandalous things that were happening to Disney actors and put it on there. So we lived in fear of that website. I didn't have food in my hotel room. They wouldn't let me eat the snacks in the mini bar. Then my security walked by my room and was made aware that they had barricaded me into my hotel room. They put furniture outside my door so that I couldn't get out and sneak out and eat if I wanted to. It was that level of controlling when it came to my food, which just made my eating troubles worse. She also stated that she felt that she was practically taking care of her own family. At a certain point, I was paying for the roof over my whole family's head and my dad had quit his job to become my manager so his income was coming right from me. My mom was a stay-at-home mom and there was just that pressure of I'm paying for everything and like I need to keep going because if things start to disappear so does the finances. Our next celeb on the list is Isla Fisher. The actress nearly drowned while filming a scene in Now You See Me. Fisher discussed what went wrong with the stunt and it is horrifying. I was in a 
a tank of water. My character is submerged in a tank and piranhas are dropped on her head, she says. And whilst we were there, we shot it over three and a half days, even though I had a quick release magnetic thing on my handcuffs, the chain that went between my ankles and my wrists was not able to be broken. And it got stuck underneath the slat and I was trapped. The actor also discussed the kill switch in the tank. There was a quick release switch that could have emptied the tank of water in 70 seconds. However, as a result of being tangled, Fisher was unable to reach for the switch. I was very scared and I was banging and saying, set me free. But everybody just thought I was doing fabulous acting. They thought I was being Meryl Streep in that tank. Actually, I was drowning. I guess Hollywood really wanted that good take. Our next celebrity is model Miranda V. The modeling world seems harmless, but darkness looms. Miranda accused Gigi and Bella Hadid's father of inappropriate physical behavior in a lengthy Instagram post in February 2018. Thank you, Kate Upton. It is time people like at Paul Marciano and Mohammed Hadid get exposed for who they really are. I met with Paul at his guest headquarters. That's actually an apartment. I thought it was a professional meeting, but it was just me, him, and Champagne, where he inappropriately touched me in an apartment. All to get a test shoot for guests. Former Disney Child star Allison Stoner exposes Hollywood with her new podcast and some of the claims are alarming. Allison said, I lost the ability to relate to non-famous experiences after the age of eight. Imagine on your eighth birthday you could never walk outside again without being stopped, asked for photos, or followed unless you wore a disguise or brought security with you. Allison also mentioned the horror when they had to kiss both Dylan Sprouse and Cole Sprouse for an episode of The Sweet Life. The experience left them with conflicted feelings. Your character may have some arc or transformation that isn't evident upon reading the script of the first episode, Stoner explained. So writers and executives might decide to make your character do anything on the next episode and it's assumed that you're gonna agree to whatever is scripted. My first kiss and several of the times I experienced kissing all happened on camera. On camera. Was I ready for that? No, I felt young and uncomfortable, Stoner said, but they were already under contract and didn't want to appear difficult. Another celeb that has exposed Hollywood is Selena Gomez, the superstar who boasts 430 million followers on Instagram, often speaks about the downside of being famous, telling Interview Magazine in 2020 that everything she does causes a reaction, saying, The sad part is, I don't remember a time when that wasn't the case. What has kept me afloat is that I know eventually it'll be somebody else, and I don't mean that in a negative way. She said, adding that fame has still allowed her to talk about things that are important to her. A huge part of why I have a platform is to help people. That's why I think I'm okay with the magnitude. I mean, I'm not really okay with it, but I'm gonna say that I am because it's worth it. Perhaps the celebrity with the most famous Hollywood horror story is Miss Britney Spears. In 2008, Jamie Spears, her dad, was granted the conservatorship after Britney reportedly struggled with mental health issues and was hospitalized. After after Britney was released, a Los Angeles court made the conservatorship permanent, giving her father power over all her finances and her medical decisions. Although Britney was an adult at the time, she was treated like a prisoner and says she was not allowed to leave her house unless granted permission. Her father was making more money than her because he was taking a huge percentage of her earnings and not telling her. Wow, what a father he is. The greed of Hollywood doesn't stop there though. Scientology, a popular organization in Hollywood, has been known to take insane amounts of money from its members, claiming the payments will get them into a higher level in the afterlife. Actress Leah Remini, a former Scientologist, exposes the organization for the way they ruined her life after she left. The actress, who was brought into the church as an eight-year-old after her mother converted to the religion, slammed the organization for its alleged scare tactics and seemingly helping certain members of avoid jail for various horrible crimes. Leah met famous Scientologist slash actor Tom Cruise while still in the organization, but had to pay $1 million to do so. 
which she paid. After leaving, Leah sued the organization for alleged stalking and hacking. She states she reportedly had cars chasing her and following her every single day and had hackers hack into her bank account and steal thousands of dollars all because she left the organization. Yikes. Not all Hollywood drama comes from Hollywood though. And this was the case for Kim Kardashian in Paris. In October 2016, while on a work trip to Paris, Kardashian was robbed at 3 a.m. while alone in her hotel. She was tied up and blindfolded while men in masks raided the hotel room for money. In the end, $10 million worth of jewelry was stolen as well as two cell phones. Kim's sisters and bodyguards were at the club while everything took place and Kim decided to stay home because she was tired. Boy, Boy, was that a life-changing mistake. Kim recalled the fear that she felt during a conversation with the concierge, who was also held hostage in that moment. She says to the concierge, I'm like, what is happening? Are we gonna die? Just tell them I have children. I have babies. I have a husband. I have a family. Like, I have to get home. Tell them, take anything you want. Two French judges later charged 12 people in relation to that robbery. Kardashian, who shares four kids with ex Kanye West, has said that she almost lost herself in the year following the crime. Explaining on the Alec Baldwin show in 2018, I was never depressed, but I wasn't motivated to get up and work like I used to. It shook me. However, the reality star also shared that she has learned to feel grateful for the experience in a way. There was a lot of me that measured who I was by how much I had. I thought, oh, I'm worth so much, she noted. That needed to change in me. Our final celebrity of the day is Miley Cyrus. Although Hannah Montana was a family friendly show, starring in it gave Miley an identity crisis, she says. I had gone from being a character almost as often as I was myself. And actually, the concept of the show is that when you're this character, when you have this alter ego, you're valuable. You've got millions of fans, you're the biggest star in the world. And then the concept was that when I looked like myself, when I didn't have the wig on anymore, nobody cared about me. I wasn't a star anymore. So that was drilled into my head, Cyrus explained. I really had to break that, and I think that's maybe why I almost created a characterized version of myself at times, in the way of being aware of how other people see me. I never created a character where it wasn't me, but I was aware of how people saw me, and I maybe played into it a little bit, Cyrus continued. Speaking of her persona after, Cyrus has also talked about how the costumes and makeup took their toll on her, likely causing some body dysmorphia. I'm this fragile little girl playing a 16 year old in a wig and a ton of makeup. It was like toddlers and tiaras. She said that being made to look like somebody she wasn't and made pretty for so many years meant that when it ended, she didn't know who she was. At number 10, we have how she felt about Desperate Housewives. While she enjoyed working on the set and had a great time with the cast and crew, it dominated her career, and she wanted to be known for something other than Desperate Housewives. In a nutshell, the show was about how one of the housewives who passed saw her friends, saw the world, and saw her personal experiences. But over the span of the 15 years the show took place, they gradually learn about the dark and hidden things about the other women, and and what they are hiding behind their white picket fences. The show had eight seasons in total and won many awards and accolades. And Felicity even won an award for outstanding lead actress in a comedy series. So why would she want to break away from all that? Well, after the success of the show, she had a hard time landing roles that matched the success of the show. She has many IMDb credits, but all of them were either small roles or not blockbuster hits, which had to have put a dent in her confidence. This brings us to the next point. At number nine, we have how she's overshadowed by her husband. She dated and is now married to William H. Macy, and they have two daughters together. But with his decades of success, his most notable role being in Shameless, it's safe to say that people would recognize him first if they're out in public together. 15 years is a long time to be with someone, especially when it comes to Hollywood. He even helped her land some of the roles in some of the movies he was in as well, which led them to both earn their stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2012. It's good for them that they can actively work together, and it's important to be supportive of one another. But there is a definite success gap between the two of them, married or not. It could be the fact that Felicity was just never cut out for bigger roles, but as long as she is happy with where her career has gotten her, that's what counts. 
kids. At number eight, we have how she's a Nepo baby. Now, it wasn't that she was born into a famous family, but she was born into a wealthy family, with her presumed father being a partner at Morgan Stanley. One of her grandfathers was the founder of the Peter Cartridge Company, a Baptist minister and an author, and her great-grandfather was a St. Louis businessman. Because of the family wealth, she attended a private school along with her six other siblings, and attended a New York University and an art school in London. This is what led her to have a stage career before reaching the big screen, but we'll get more into that later. While she hasn't directly been labeled a Nepo baby, she insists her success came from her auditions and her natural acting talent, rather than the fact that her parents paid for her to have such a prestigious acting education. At number seven, we have how she started as a stage performer. As I mentioned before, she did study acting and began acting in theater, as a lot of actors do. She's acted in 17 different stage productions, with most of them actually being in New York. She also continued to star in stage productions up until 2015, while taking breaks in between to star on screen. She hasn't said anything about her progression from theater to television, so we don't have a good inside look at how she managed the transition or how she handled it. But with her having numerous lead roles, it's safe to say that her stage acting paid off enough for her to become a television actor, even if they were only small roles in small movies. At number six, we have her trying to be a parent. It's not easy to be a parent, and it makes it even harder when both you and your husband are regularly working individuals whose entire livelihood is based on landing roles. In the year 2000, she had her first daughter, and in 2002, they welcomed their second daughter. However, when Sophia, her eldest, was born, she felt like she wasn't fit for motherhood, and that she just kept making mistake after mistake while being sleep deprived. She starred in Door to Door in 2002, and has been acting regularly since then, starring in Chris Christmas with the Cranks, Transmerica, Raising Helen, and Phoebe's Wonderland, to name some of the bigger ones. This couldn't have been easy with two young daughters at home. While acting seems to run in the family, considering one of her daughters is currently in school for acting, but it wasn't always sunshine. This brings me to the next point. At number five, we have how she didn't want to be a bad mother. No parent wants to hear that they failed or that they didn't do enough, or their actions caused their child to grow up the way they did. So because of this, both Felicity and William tried to raise their girls out of the media's eye, which is what we know is probably for the best, considering some children of famous people who grow up being famous are a little out of touch with reality. William said in an interview that when Felicity found out she was pregnant, she tried to gain all the knowledge she could about parenting through books, and would read stacks of different parenting books in order to do her best as a mother. Their oldest daughter, Sophia, wanted to follow in her parents' footsteps, and is becoming an actress herself, but not without a hand lent by her mother which I'll get into later. Both Felicity and William are super supportive of her and say that she's a talented actress, so we hope that success will come her way when she graduates from college, even if her entry was paved smoother than others. At number four, we have how she didn't win an award for American Crime. For some background knowledge, American Crime is a crime drama TV show that had three seasons, with Felicity being one of the lead roles in all three seasons. The main cast play a different role each season, but are ultimately all connected together, centered around the crime of the season. Well, the show was a hit, with the first two seasons scoring 95% Rotten Tomatoes, and the third season scoring a whopping 100%. The first season was nominated for 27 awards, the second season was nominated for 11 awards, and the third season was nominated for two awards. She alone was nominated for eight of those awards, but she didn't win a solo award. And the entire main cast won a satellite award for being the best television ensemble cast. So you can bet she was a little upset at the fact that she was constantly nominated, but never quite good enough to win. At number three, we have Transmerica. The movie received well with critics, but was a lot to take in for some fans. It's got a very long and complicated plotline that makes no sense in some places. And one of the places that left some fans disappointed was that Felicity played a trans female character. It was also widely disregarded because it was released in 2005, and people weren't nearly as open to the movie concept as they would be now. But people thought that Felicity's character should have been played by an actual trans woman who would have had a more genuine understanding of the character, and what the character goes through throughout the movie. 
The movie was originally created for a film festival, so it never saw theaters. And it was rated a 6.8 out of 10, according to 145 people. However, she did win a Golden Globe for her performance, and critics thought it was a great movie, considering it won 12 awards at a few different award ceremonies. But with how fast the world changes and how quickly Hollywood's gaze changes, it's still overlooked. At number two, we have how she is practically invisible in today's world. While she had a steady career, her name is only known because of the scandal she participated in a few years ago. Even if she won a handful of awards, she was never in anything monumental enough to be acknowledged by the modern world, or to be remembered as an important character of film history. While being married to a famous actor as well helps with her relevance, it's not working as well as some may think. She has gone back to stage acting, which isn't nearly widely appreciated as acting on screen, so she's going backward rather than forward in her career. But at least she's still trying, right? This proves that even if your star is on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, you aren't always relevant to Hollywood. And last but not least at number one, we have the Varsity Blues scandal. The point most of you have been waiting for since she just came forward and talked about it for the first time since it happened. And there have been a lot of different reactions. The Sparks Note version of what happened is her daughter Sophia, the one I mentioned before who's in school for acting. Well, her practice SAT scores were subpar, so Felicity paid someone $15,000 to improve her score enough for her to be accepted into the college she's still attending. Felicity claimed she had no choice but to break the law for her daughter to pursue her dream, and she wasn't the only one who was caught during the scandal. Rich parents have been doing it for years, but the fact that she claimed she saw no other option for her daughter if she didn't, and how she wanted her to have a chance at a future, as if she couldn't study harder or work harder like most American students. She even went as far to say that when the FBI entered her mansion and woke up her and her daughters, she thought it was a joke until she was put in handcuffs. She was in jail for 11 days before being released. This just proves how far famous parents will go to make sure their child comes out on top, which we have seen a lot in celebrities. Number 10. Tragedy. One of the more truly tragic revelations since the book's release is the fact that Megan suffered a loss very late in her journey as a mom. Within the final pages of the poetry book, Megan describes the heartbreaking pregnancy loss that she suffered with her fiance Colson Baker, better known as MGK. Megan told Kana Whitworth from ABC News that she had never been through anything like that before in her life. She has three kids already, so it was very difficult for both of them, and it sent them on a very wild journey together and separately and together. And apart, trying to navigate what everything means and why it happened. Megan has made it clear since day one that this is not some expose memoir that you're going to sit down and read for 20 hours on end. This is a collection of truth told through her words, a story that needed to be shared or it was going to make her sick. She's dealt with physical violence from exes, manipulation, tragedy, all these things that she's had to deal with alone or behind closed doors. While she never names any names in her book, we still feel our hearts ache and wrench when she reads a single sentence. Number 9. Addicted to Boys The title of Megan's book of poems is called Pretty Boys Are Poisonous and is filled with multiple excerpts regarding her past relationships. One thing that she's spoken about briefly in interviews about this book is the fact that she was addicted to boys and had a history of getting together with her co-stars. She told Drew Barrymore on The Drew Barrymore Show that when she was young she was really rebellious and wild, always running away to fall in love with a new flame aka every single co-star. She added that at the time she felt herself to be a free spirit and was just addicted to the idea of falling in love. She went on to tell Drew that it was actually her kids, Noah, Bodie, and Journey, that changed her whole mindset on relationships and love. She shares her three sons with her ex, Brian Austin Green, and she claims that something happened when she had her first child. She realized she didn't want to repeat the pattern of her own parents with her kids. Despite being a solid mom, she did admit that she's been a little bad in the past, admitting that she painted a Friedrich Nietzsche quote on an ex's wall in a ton of paint just so they had to redo their room, poking fun at herself by saying anyone who dated her should write a poetry book as she was not a peach. Number 8. Oxy and Takiki. There is a poem in this book that shares a similar name to this entry, kind of, I'm not allowed to say the real thing on the internet. And restrictions. Megan revealed on Good Morning America that she has been in several physical and mentally damaging relationships. I know that's not even close to the right word to use, but again, can't say the real one. She explained that she was involved with a very famous dude, but that nobody knew that she was dating him. This unnamed celebrity is one of the men described as an evil ex in this book. In her poem, she describes a dark moment with this unnamed man, writing, Your eyes go black, and I know it's too late to run. She told people that she was pinned, spat on, and 
later had hands placed on her throat by a delusional and possessed man. I had the opportunity to listen to some parts of this book and I am saying this with 100% sincerity, go read this book. Megan is a wonderful writer and I honestly feel like these words are so powerful. This particular one is indescribable, like I can't read the entire thing because it's got so many no-no words in it but also I just I don't want to ruin it for you. Number 7, MGK Rumors. Cheating rumors are always circulating about everyone. Nobody believes that Hollywood icons can partake in a normal, healthy relationship. For Megan and her fiance MGK, there have been rumors forever. Since the first day that these two were spotted together, people have been convinced that MGK is somehow an unfaithful maniac. But like, why do people think that? Not sure if you've listened to this guy speak about his music or just in general recently, but he's a bit of a sweetheart. I watched this man paint his nails with Drew Barrymore on her show. They talked about life, career, and so many cool things, yet the internet looks at this man and just assumes that he's a menace. Well, the rumors were of course false and Megan Fox actually had to clear the air herself. There was a rumor that MGK was seeing someone named Sophie, who was MGK's guitarist. Megan cleared the air and let everybody know that not only had MGK never cheated on her, she was actually pretty close with bandmates and was confident that Sophie and her fiance were not an item. Megan told people, that it was extremely disrespectful to run a new story that was baseless and contains only lies. Very true. Number six. 2009 Golden Globes. Now this isn't a revelation from a book, but it's something that she had to go through publicly and it does deserve to be mentioned. In 2009, comments started flying left and right after Megan Fox was spotted acting a little bit strange at that year's Golden Globes award ceremony. She explained that during the event, she was placed at a table with Blake Lively and the Jonas Brothers. In the center of the table was a bottle of Moe Champang. She went through multiple glasses of that very quickly. At the time, she was not much of a no-no juice indulger, but following her actions at the event, she decided to quit for good. She actually had herself a good old fashioned blackout at the event, but the parts that she does remember are not great. She went on the red carpet and said a lot of things that apparently got her in a ton of trouble. In a clip from 2009, Megan can be seen walking around telling people how nervous she was to be there and that she was on the verge of tossing up her cookies at any moment. She also made a ton of comments on her female co-stars. Nothing bad. Just one quote I found in particular was her expressing how much she she wanted to have Salma Hayek's chest. The evening was also a bit strange as people were wondering where her husband at the time, Brian Austin Green, was. She told people that he was a man with an ego and that he didn't want to be her date. Number five shoplifting. Megan's done a lot of things over the years and one of those things as it turns out is shoplifting. Not while she was famous though, she did not pull a Winona Ryder. She actually stole a $7 bottle of lip gloss from the Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen makeup collection when she was still in her teens. She revealed in a resurfaced interview that the Walmart employees actually caught her and called the police. She was made to go to a real courtroom and appear in front of a real judge who gave her two options. Either she had to wear a sign that says, I stole from Walmart and stand outside for three days, or she could wrap Christmas presents. Guess which one she picked. So hey, uh, if you had Christmas presents wrapped at a Walmart in the US roughly 20 years ago, might have been Megan Fox. Hey, that's pretty cool. There is not a chance on this planet that that paper still exists, but hey, that'd be pretty valuable paper if it did. Number four, Michael Bay scandal. Megan has been featured in several films over the years, but it was an interview about her time working with Michael Bay that landed her in a lot of hot water. The original live action Transformers movies came out in 2007 and co-starred Megan and Shia LaBeouf in the leading roles. Now, they were fun films on screen, but behind the scenes there was apparently a ton of tension on set. According to Megan, who had previously worked with Michael on Bad Boys 2, working for Michael was like working for Schmittler. Fun fact, if you add shh in front of someone's names, you can say it online. Loophole. Of course, Michael didn't appreciate being compared to like one of the worst men in human history, so many speculated that her being left out of the third movie might have had something to do with this behind the scenes drama. She went on to call him bland and claimed that he had no personality or social skills, which is just plain rude. I don't know why she had to say that. When the comments were made public, her career began to slowly suffer. Not only was she written out of the Transformer series, but she was forced to make a public apology and retract her statements following the slew of backlash. She took a few years off, but Michael himself later acknowledged that there were missteps on both parts and accepted her retractions. But the pair were able to patch things up and work together on the live action Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies from 2014. So, yay us! 
Number 3. Me Too Movement As some may remember, the Me Too movement began back in the mid 2010s and acted as a conduit for performers to speak out against their fellow Hollywood peers and, you know, actually have their voices heard. Many celebrities were outed and the situations with them are so bad that I can't even say their names. But I can make up new ones. People like Bill Cos, Harvey Hamburger Shop, and Kevin Spaceman were at the forefront of these allegations. Megan was actually left out of this conversation at the time, and it was mainly due to her being annoyed at Hollywood. She had actually been trying to out some of her peers for years, but according to Megan, she was ridiculed every time she actually spoke up. For Megan, she had already expressed how uncomfortable she felt on certain sets, especially Bad Boys 2, where she was under a waterfall at the age of 15, and claims that she had tried to bring attention to the misogyny that exists in Hollywood long before the movement existed. However, the movement only made her a bigger punchline. Even when she attempted to branch out into more female-led projects, she was apparently met with similar ridicule. She claims to have never felt truly included in the movement, but believes in it nonetheless. Number 2. Lied About LA Celebrities indulge their stories all the time. Most careers are literally built on the foundation of lying for money. While Megan may be great on screen, she's apparently a wonderful liar off screen as well. During an interview with GQ a while back, she detailed her wild nights out when she first moved to Los Angeles, detailing a specific club that she used to attend regularly called The Body Shop. Inside, she met a woman named Nikita and fell hard. Megan explains that she would buy her things, frequent the establishments, and a few other steamy details that I can't get into. However, a few years later, the story was revealed to be heavily indulged by Megan herself. She said that the story was true, but she might have exaggerated some of the aspects for fun. For instance, she made it seem like the relationship between herself and Nikita was physical or romantic, but that just wasn't the case. She just had a crush and they got along. Simple as that. And at number one, legendary. While in attendance at the highly anticipated battle between Conor McGregor and Dustin Poirier at UFC 264 in 2021, Megan made some observations about the former president, Donald Trump. During an interview with Jimmy Kimmel, she revealed that the entire audience was in awe of this man attending the event. She said that when he entered, it was to a ton of applause and that he was surrounded surrounded by tons of secret service agents, to which she said Trump was the legend. Now, when news broke that Megan called him a legend, there was a ton of backlash, but she quickly clarified what she meant with the statement. She said that she doesn't align herself with any political parties or individual politicians. She never said that Don was a legend. She said that his appearance at the arena was legendary, okay? She ended the statement by sarcastically saying that she appreciated the uneducated, medieval, pitchfork-carrying, burn-a-witch-at-the-stake mentality that the world needs more of. Well said. At number 10, we have how Priscilla was only 14 when they met. We know Elvis has a knack for being eccentric and a real crowd pleaser, but when he is a 26 year old man who had already begun establishing his career, started dating the 14 year old Priscilla. It should have caused way more outrage than it did. In 1959, there was over a 10 year age gap between them and she was legally still a minor. Her parents weren't too fond of the thought of her daughter dating a literal grown adult who happened to be a musician. But but they begrudgingly let it slide because he was rich and famous. Priscilla and her family were living in Germany at the time, and the only reason they met was because Elvis was drafted there with the US military, seeing as he was enlisted in the height of his prime. So not only did he have an established music career, but he was old enough to be a US soldier when she was just going into high school. To add to all of this, when he was sent back to the States, he up and left her with no contact and barely so much as a goodbye. This brings us to our next point, about how he was a terrible partner. Before before he and Priscilla were married, he knew exactly who he was, what he looked like, and the effect he had on young women. So in a very scummy fashion, he would often create narratives to convince women to spend the night with him, whether it be for physical intimacy or emotional intimacy. Actress Sybil Shepard said that she had a brief affair with him and she was pretty disappointed. She even claimed it was highly overrated. According to Priscilla, however, he was skilled in every way except for the actual deed itself. She was raised Catholic, so maintaining purity before marriage was a must, and he abided by that, but barely. After they were married, he gave Priscilla 
a child, Lisa Marie, and he refused to have any sort of intimacy with her after she was born. And that is where the marriage began to fall apart. Apparently up until his passing, he needed to have a woman in his bed, whether or not he was performing or whether or not he was married. This leads us to point number eight, about how often he really cheated on her. I mean, when you're that rich and famous, he has, he used that as an excuse to justify his actions, which is already an awful thing to do. It began when they actually started dating, seeing as he was mucking around with 14 year old Priscilla, he also had a spicy thing with his private secretary, who was only 19 at the time. He would often bounce around from woman to woman just to feel something different every night. And of course, he could get away with it because he's Elvis. When he left Germany and went back to Tennessee, he got into a short lived relationship with Anita Wood, and she discovered he would often have wild nights with young girls. She even found a letter from Priscilla begging him to move her to the state so they could be together again. This is when Anita saw behind the curtain and she left him shortly after. But because Priscilla was young and naive, she would have been willing when Elvis introduced new players to the game, if you catch my drift. His excuse for his unfaithful actions was that he was famous and that's just who he was, and she could accept him for who he was or leave. In a healthy relationship, that isn't a position you should ever be in, famous or not. At number seven, we have his use of substances. It's no secret that Elvis has severe substance issues. It was the 60s, so even soda pop had substances mixed in. Linda Thompson was one of his past relationships, and in her autobiography, she went into detail about what it was like being with him while he was struggling. Apparently while they were together, she had saved his life multiple times because she found him unconscious face down on the floor or having taken too much prescription medication. She said he felt like he couldn't be harmed by the medications he was taking, even if it was far too much. She said that he had over a dozen different medication bottles on his nightstand when they went to Vegas for their first trip together. It got to a point where he would take an absurd amount of sleeping pills to sleep through the entire day so he would be rested enough to stay up all night. All the medication really did was have a hand in his passing. At number six, we have how Priscilla was a co-producer of the movie. It isn't a dark Elvis secret, but it makes the amount of stuff he did in the movie all the more haunting. She wanted to make sure that it was both accurate and dramatic uh, at the same time, and so that she could recreate scenes that accurately represented her time with Elvis. Priscilla's book, Elvis and Me, gave very good details about the situation she was put in, and she had no fear dragging his name through the mud, considering everything he put her through. The most interesting part is that when the casting director for the movie did an interview with Lisa Marie, Elvis and Priscilla's daughter, she didn't see what Priscilla was talking about, and she thinks her mother made him seem way more awful than he actually was, and that her book was vengeful and hateful. And Lisa Marie couldn't understand why. Lisa Marie actually had issues very similar to her father's, so it makes sense why she would be so blind to his personal life problems. At number five, we have how often Elvis left. Now this one is less shocking than some of the others, which is why it comes right in the middle of our list. We knew he left Priscilla high and dry when she was a teenager, but even when they were living together, he would often be gone for months at a time, just to be home for a few days to leave again. This took a serious toll on Priscilla's mental health. He would leave for many different reasons. Sometimes it was tours, sometimes it was for movies, other times for interviews, but she was at home alone all the same. Well, at one point, she decided she had enough and made a surprise appearance in Los Angeles where he was filming at the time. Instead of him being happy and welcoming his wife to the set, he threatened her and sent her away and said that she needed to accept that that was who he was. This should have been her breaking point, but instead she still married him, which led to a very mentally damaging relationship that only lasted a few more years before she decided it was time to leave him. At number four, we have how Priscilla was barely legal when they were married. Now, I've mentioned a few times in the list already that she was only 14 when they met and dated for the first time, but when he finally paid her to move in with him, she was still in high school. Her parents were very against the idea of her moving in with him across the world, but reluctantly they agreed, and she finished her final year in high school in Tennessee. But because she was living a very lavish and fancy lifestyle, being Elvis's girlfriend, she barely managed to pass her final year. They got married in 1976, which would have made Priscilla 22 at the time. She had enough time to graduate and get into the groove of adulthood. The following year, she found out she was pregnant with Elvis's child, and like I mentioned before, that was one of many stakes in their marriage. She was definitely too young to be married and have kids, 
and it affected her mental and emotional state as well as her physical well-being. At number three, we have how a book was linked to his passing. In 1977, three of Elvis's former personal bodyguards got together to write a book titled Elvis, What Happened? It was basically a tell-all memoir about Elvis and all of the shady deals and things he was involved with. And it gave a deeper look into his substance use and who he really was as a person. Well, the book was released just two weeks before his passing. So people theorized that he caught wind of the book's release and couldn't cope with people seeing how awful he really was. Before his passing, he actually tried to stop the book from being published by attempting to bribe the publishers. They refused the offer because because they knew the book would make waves across the world. Apparently, when he found it, it was released, his heart problems got worse, seeing as he already had high blood pressure, which didn't help with the other bodily issues he was enduring at the time. People think this contributed to his passing, but that was never confirmed, considering he had a whole pharmacy in his system when he passed. At number two, we have how he wanted to act in serious movies. It's not nearly as dark as some of the other things on the list, but it's definitely an interesting point to make. Elvis got his big break as a musician, as everyone knows. But he was also an actor for a while at the height of his stardom. He often played in summer beach movies or comedies, but he really wanted to get into playing more serious and genuine roles. His manager, Tom Parker, didn't take him where he wanted to be, and he felt like he led him astray. However, Parker did hold up to his end of the bargain. He promised Elvis he would make him millions, which he did, whether it be for the right or wrong reasons. When Priscilla was helping work on the film, she said the director did a great job of recreating Elvis the way she saw him, and how he really was from her point of view. The last we heard, Priscilla and Tom Parker are on good terms now, all things considered. And last but not least at number one, we have having his mirrors changed. This point makes number one because of the amount of concern it should have raised. When he was still young and married to Priscilla, he had a Beverly Hills home that was far from welcoming. He and his guy friends would invite masses of dancers and showgirls to have nights with them. But it wasn't just questionable adult fun. Elvis had installed two-way mirrors in a lot of the walls of the bedrooms so he could spy on the other people he invited without them knowing. And he also kept an eye on anyone who was in the house. Priscilla decided it was finally time to put her foot down and say they needed to be changed. Well, after his many, many affairs, he did change them to be one-way mirrors, but it was so he could have full privacy in his own home with no opportunities for anyone to secretly be filming him or be spying on him. How hypocritical. At the end of the day, his life wasn't all it was cracked up to be. And with the release of the movie Priscilla, we are getting a better look into how he really was as a person instead of just being the character we see on screen and on stage. <laughs> 